whenever you talk about stuff like this, people are very quick to peddle their fad diets, you know, keto and carnivore and the hamster and vodka diet. I don't fail at picking the right diet. I fail at controlling my behavior. Probably gonna die. This is one hell of a hill. I'm not used to cycling anymore, but oh well. Gotta get it done. This is the second time on this bike. I just got it on Kijiji and uh, comes with one of the standard kind of racing saddles. And I'm still butt hurt from yesterday. <laughs> so I don't even really want to sit down. And yes, feel free to laugh at this contraption here. I said, I just got it and haven't had time to go pick up the, uh, the light yet. It's ordered for a pickup, but they haven't let me know it's ready yet. Looking forward to cruising down this gargantuan hill on the way back though. Yeah, Hillcrest Street, no kidding. And there we go, Trail Ahoy. So I got a bike that's appropriate for my current build. A fat bike, which has gigantic tires. So this is good for rough terrain. And uh, you can ride on snow as well. That's what it's designed for. I don't know how far I can trust my brakes yet. So I'd rather just walk down here. Yeah, it's slippery too. I think that was the right call. Better an intact pussy than a crippled hard ass, right? Ah, oh, the sight of kids bullying each other. So heartwarming. All right, so what's the deal with this video? I titled it Confessions of a Food Addict. Because uh, I don't want to talk about my current situation. Not, by the way, in order to fish for sympathy or try to lecture anyone on how to lose weight and do this and do that. It's just sharing my personal story. And I'm also recording this for myself to look at in the future, hopefully, when I'm slim again and be like, yeah, I remember the struggle. I don't ever want to go back there again. But I did multiple times. I have to admit, it's never been this hard. I mean, it's always been hard, don't get me wrong. When you're dealing with this shit, it's never easy. The thing is, this is not like a getting older and putting some fat on. I mean, I guess that's part of it. Because when you, when you get close to your 40s, it definitely gets harder, let alone older. Oh, but this is not a just letting myself... I mean, okay, part of it is letting myself go. I'm, I'm not going to bullshit you. Some people take issue with the term food addict and they will vehemently deny that such a thing as food addiction exists. Um, there isn't a ton of research on the matter. There is some. No, I will say I don't blame you. If you don't, if you think food addiction is bullshit and it's just a bunch of excuses or whatever, I don't blame you. If you've never had to deal with it, you wouldn't know. And I cannot expect you to understand what it's like. Really, the term addiction fits because the behavior pattern is pretty similar to drug addicts. Like in the sense that you would be hard pressed to find any drug addict who would deny that the drug is bad for their health. You know, it's very few cases. I think most drug addicts are aware of it. They just don't care. Or I should say they don't care in the moment when the craving hits. There's plenty of people, including alcoholics and, and everything, who try to go cold turkey, which often fails a lot, and just to really want to make a change. But they don't have full control over their behavior. And it's the same here. At times, I do not have control over my behavior. It sounds ridiculous because you say, well, you're controlling your hands, grabbing the food and stuffing it in your mouth. You control your teeth chewing it. Yes, that's true, but it's not so much a direct loss of control. It's loss of any kind of motivation other than to get the thing, other than to give your brain what it craves. Whenever I have a binge attack, I'm fully aware that what I'm doing is bad and I need to stop. I tell myself, you need to stop right now. Okay, stop it. But I don't. It's just at that time, the 
the desire to lose fat is, is not a desire, it's just a thought. Do you know what I mean? It's a thought without any motivation behind it. At that time, all I want to do is get that sugar in me or that fat or that whatever, and nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. Exercise is good, but exercise cannot cope with that kind of crap. There's a certain level of overeating that exercise just can't keep up with. I've watched a video lecture by a doctor specializing in uh, food addiction, and uh, what she said really hit home. She talked about trigger foods. So types of food that trigger a binge or, or uncontrollable overeating. And that's generally processed garbage, super high fat and high salt or sugar or both, you know, pizza, chocolate bars, that sort of stuff. And that's what really sets it off. If I can manage to stay on a clean diet, that's how I did it before, eating very, very clean, you know, lots of vegetables and fruit and grains and legumes and all of that, no processed crap. And that works, but that only works when you've done it for a while. Because when you've done it for a certain period of time, like a few weeks, then the cravings subside. Unfortunately, they never go away. And this is another similarity to, for example, alcoholism or any kind of drug addiction. You can't just have a little bit. I mean, okay, some can. But from what I've heard, most alcoholics have to abstain completely. There have been cases where people were dry for years and then got one drink and just relapsed and just triggered the whole cascade again and it went downhill from there. And I noticed that's the case here too. And that was my mistake. After I managed to get down to my lowest weight, I, I was really getting sick of the restrictions and that's always a problem. My, eventually my will just runs out because the cravings never stop. I wish they did. I wish I could tell you something that works that eliminates cravings, but no, not really. Uh, sticking to healthy, clean eating will limit the cravings, but in my case, they never ever go away. Even at my slimmest, when I was eating healthy, when I had been eating healthy for a year, I still had cravings. I still had the same old cravings for the same old garbage. It never ever goes away. And it just started to be too restrictive for me. I wanted to loosen up a little bit because I love food. I freaking love food. It's a big part of quality of life for me. You know, if I was just a foodie and not an addict, that would be fine. And you know, it really hurts to have gone through this process so many times and still relapsing because I know better. I really know better. I'm not looking for any advice, by the way. Usually whenever you talk about stuff like this, people are very quick to peddle their fad diets, you know, keto and carnivore and, and who knows what else, the potato diet and the, the whatever, you know, the wet rags and kale diet, the hamster and vodka diet. I don't even know. I know what to do. I know how to do it. I'm, I don't fail at picking the right diet. I fail at controlling my behavior. My particular neurological setup also screws me over. Again, I'm not looking either for sympathy or for excuses. I'm just telling you as it is. You may not be aware of one of the major issues behind ADHD, and that is executive dysfunction. So it means that it's harder to formulate plans and execute them than it is for neurotypical people. Relating to something in the future, a goal, a reward that is yet to come, is difficult because it's not, it doesn't have the same motivational power. You know, if I think about, okay, so in a year from now, I could be slim again. It doesn't really give me a lot of motivation because my brain just goes, what do you mean a year? It doesn't exist. The future doesn't exist for my brain. It's not an emotional sort of motivation, if you know what I mean. And that's what really, that's really the driving force behind strong motivation. The desire to achieve something. I don't really have that desire. I do feel dissatisfaction with where I'm now, which of course bothers me. But here's the problem. Something that makes me feel bad right now 
makes my brain want to fix it by, you know, releasing dopamine, which happens through approaching tasty, unhealthy food. So this is why you can't easily motivate somebody to lose weight by shaming them. I mean, don't get me wrong, for some people it works, but it will just drive others to eat more, basically, to alleviate the bad feelings. Sounds pathetic, I know, but that's how it is. And if you're dealing with the same issues, this is what you should be aware of. Not as an, as an excuse to hide behind, but as a way to understand yourself better. I hope I'm back on track. I'm a little skeptical because I've said that twice before already, or thought that, I mean, I haven't said it in a video, but thought so. Which is weird because so far every major weight loss journey was preceded by that Oh, by that feeling of, okay, that's it, I'm back on track. It used to feel like I'm flipping a switch inside my head. And from then on it went. But I've had that twice now, recently, and didn't change yet. So here's another push. And that's the positive note I want to end on. Don't give up on yourself, basically. I haven't given up on myself yet, even though I gotta admit it's been tempting at times. But even if you keep failing, you know, if you just don't give up, if you just keep trying, despite the setbacks, even if the setbacks go on for a year or two, or who knows how long, just gotta push again, gotta try again, keep trying. And I'm convinced I will get there again. I will get to a healthy weight again. I don't know how long it's gonna take me. I don't know if I'll be able to do it in a, in a year this time, or if it takes me two or three or even five years, but I will. I freaking will. Thanks for watching and have a good one.